Good morning. Hello and welcome. My name is Bhuvan Apurvajha. This is the Indian Express Explain class that comes to you every morning at 7 a.m. on Study IQ English. Let's get started. I have two agenda for you today. Just two topics. First one is to do with a direct article that we have picked from the Explain page of Indian Express. And number two is to do with the color coding of the economies. So what you'll realize is that economies are largely segregated or you can say compartmentalized into 10 sorts of varieties, different colors, each of them with a different meaning. And straight away you'll realize that this color coding is in direct relation to the application, the implementation of sustainable developmental goals. Okay, so we'll understand the 10 color coding of economies, the 10 subclassifications, each of them again of extreme relevance to you, not just from the pre perspective, but something that you should be looking to freely use in your answers in the means. Right, let's get started. If you have any particular doubts, questions, anything related to the discussion here today, you will get in touch with me. Meanwhile, you will uh, find the PDF of this entire lecture uploaded on my Telegram channel uh, later this afternoon where you also find a lot of discussion, a lot of questions are put forward for your consideration. And please realize these are original questions. Okay. And these are concept based questions based on the changing patterns that was observed in the year 2023. So I'd most recommend you, uh, recommend you to go ahead and become a part of this channel. Right. Shall we get started guys? Coder, you know, your neighbor. Good morning guys. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Right. This is the first topic that I have for you today. India's first Pompeii disease patient passes away. Okay. So what you realize is that Pompeii disease, again, uh, a very uh, rare disease, right. And so this is our first topic of the day, we'll seek to understand firstly, what is the Pompeii disease about? Okay, how does it affect the patient? And say what is the diagnosis? How do you cure it? Right? Whether any cure is available, we'll seek to understand the entire length of the discussion. But one central idea that you should straight away realize is that Pompeii disease is a rare genetic disorder. Okay, so you're looking at say the other genetic disorders, right? Let's understand them, a few of them. So genetic disorders that can happen either due to a mutation of a gene or some defect in the gene. So you're looking at say uh, Parkinson's, okay, Alzheimer's, sickle cell anemia, right? Down syndrome, right? So all of them are to do with either some mutation that has happened in your gene or something that is of a genetic defect in your body. Similar category is the Pompeii disease, which is now caused by an enzyme deficiency. So what happens ideally in the human body, right? In the human body, you have glycogen now that is broken down into glucose. Okay. This is what is expected that your glycogen breaks down into glucose, which is essentially the energy that you use. Okay. But in terms of Pompeii disease, this break doesn't happen. So you have accumulation of glycogen within your body. Okay, look at this also known as the glycogen storage disease. This should give you away that instead of the break happening from glycogen to glucose, this just accumulates. Why? Because of an enzyme deficiency. So because of this buildup, right, your organs, your tissues, your hearts, your skeletal muscles, all of them are now under immense stress, pressure builds up and eventually you find that organ failure is the most likely uh, cause of death of a patient who is suffering from Pompeii disease, right? Its prevalence is extremely rare, 1 in 40,000 to 1 in 3 lakh births, okay? And two ways that you can go ahead and figure it out. So one is, say you have infantile Pompeii disease. So the newly born baby shows symptoms of Pompeii disease or it can come later in your life. Say for example, Huntington's disease, right? When we consider Huntington's disease, you will realize that this onset of this particular disease can be very, very late. Huh? Almost into adulthood, you can go and reach and find out that, okay, you have Huntington's disease. But in terms of the Pompeii's disease, you can have the two types of onsets that are, uh, say, prevalent. One is infantile uh, onset and the other is the late onset. So let's go ahead and understand each of them individually now. Okay, symptoms and causes, like I told you, it will cause progressive muscle weakness, especially in the skeletal muscles. You have glycogen that is getting built up, which is why in fact, straight away you'll realize it's known as the glycogen storage disease type 2, right? So babies may have poor muscle tone or floppy infant syndrome, right? Which is known as hypotonia. 
you can have enlargement of your heart liver tongue all of that can happen because of glycogen accumulation right and so what you find is that different symptoms are seen in both the cases whether it's an infant who has uh, got the particular disease or it is a proper adult or someone who is going into adulthood right so the two different sorts of uh, uh, say uh, symptoms are seen in case of someone who is going into adulthood you will find that they, you will see a stunting is observed okay that they do not go, grow to their particular height that they develop respiratory illnesses the first whereas in terms of an infant you are going to find that the muscle development is now him, uh, hindered uh, adversely okay so, so two different sorts of diseases but two different uh, say exhibits that can be seen but both of them uh, eventually draw the whole conclusion from the accumulation of glycogen that is happening within your body okay so let's look at the different types of uh, say effects that you can see respiratory failure the number one cause of death then you can have cardiac issues that can come up which are not that common but you can find them right you will have difficulty chewing poor weight gain stunting will be observed you will have musculoskeletal problems your muscle weakness will be observed okay it will not develop to its uh, say fittest and fullest so you will have muscle pain right now let's go forward and understand the diagnosis and the cure okay now diagnosing this is a multifaceted approach why first what you do is you go ahead and enzyme conduct an enzyme assay which is nothing but say figuring out where is the lacking you know because eventually it is an enzyme deficiency it is happening due to deficiency of an enzyme right so you carry out a whole survey of the say enzyme functioning of the body okay and then you go ahead and do genetic genetic testing also because eventually it is a genetic disorder so these two are the primary categories in which you go ahead and diagnose a particular patient but what you realize is that right now there is no cure for this okay it is incurable the focus is on making life easy for the patient okay and so for that you have a treatment that is known as enzyme replacement therapy ERT right eventually you realize that you can only go ahead and address this bit this bit can only be managed you cannot go ahead and address it to the fullest right so thus you go ahead and conduct the enzyme replacement therapy which involves the infusion of the missing enzyme to alleviate glycogen build up that is it so you go ahead and introduce enzyme from art, uh, from outside from artificial uh, say mechanisms so as to break down the glycogen to gluco uh, glucose process okay so this is the pompe disease the first uh, unfortunate uh, demise of this patient happening in india a patient 24 years of age eventually passing away after valiantly uh, battling the particular disease okay let's look at this uh, question very quickly my friends it is a genetic blood disorder that affects the patient's hemoglobin the protein that carries oxygen throughout the body okay so what is this particular line talking about which particular disease is it is it down syndrome alzheimer's parkinson's or sickle cell disorder let me know very quickly in the comment box you will leave the answers for me as you always do in the chat box below bulbul charu good morning fellows guys thanks for joining right before i go forward very quickly uh, so the test series is a, a, a major part of your preparation okay like i have told you in the past very frequently you should be studying and at an equal level solving questions okay and so for that uh, study iq has come up with this entire test series program yes you have sectional tests you have full length tests right all of them again for gs for csat close to 100 tests being offered in fact 100 plus tests being offered okay the complete mechanism uh, the process in which you should go ahead and say self evaluate before the big day right eventually the fear of answering questions has to be won over and for that it is best recommended that you go ahead and engage in test taking and question solving almost on a daily basis okay your focus should be on solving questions alongside your uh, studying bit if you are just focusing on the studying and not solving questions or taking tests weekly tests you are doing it wrong right so my advice is go ahead look at the course uh, deliverables the test series for this okay you have full length tests uh, for gs for csat for sectional tests you have topical tests all of that included as part of this package use the code b a l i v e okay this will give you another discount over and above what is mentioned here and then you get to go ahead and well
a lot of focus is there to go ahead and make sure that you are absolutely well prepared for the D-Day. Right, my friends. So here is a topic. Now, many of you, I fully expect, will not be aware of, well, I have how many of them here? 10 of them? 3, 3, 6, 3, 9. Okay. 3, 3, 6, 9 of them are here. Brown economy, green economy, blue economy, golden economy, purple, white, silver, grey, black. Most of you may just be aware of this. Okay, because India has taken substantial steps to go ahead and become a blue economy. Okay, but you ought to have a fair idea of the rest. And more importantly, my friends, not just say the color coding, but also the relationship that it shares with the implementation of the sustainable developmental goals. Okay, this is absolutely expected of you. Okay, so stand by if you are unaware of these particular words, we will go ahead and understand them one by one. Let's start with brown economy. Now, as the name gives it away, brown is to do with the, those environmentally destructive forms of activity, right? That those countries that are creating their own, say, national capital based on unmitigated, unhindered exploitation of resources. So, for example, the OECD countries. For example, prominently you will understand Saudi, right? Even Russia to a certain extent can be categorized under brown economies, okay? So, again, you are looking at the African nations which are largely sustaining themselves on, say, the mining of uh, various minerals that may be there in an unsustainable fashion. Unsustainable being the keyword, right? So, those may be categorized as brown economies. They will employ people uh, primarily in industries like fossil fuels, cement, iron smelting, quarrying and mining, right? So, the two most prominent examples that come to my mind are Venezuela and Saudi Arabia. That's brown economy. Let's go forward and understand green economy then. So, green economy, as the name gives it away, are to do with environment sustainability. Just like grey, uh, sorry, brown was to do with environmentally unsustainable practices. Green is to do with the sustainable practices. Okay. So, low carbon, resource efficient and socially inclusive. Okay. Why? Because the focus is on sustainability. And you must realize by now that you cannot have a conversation on sustainability if you are not including communities, if you are not including people. Okay, mood changer. Good morning, good morning. Okay, in a green economy, growth in employment and income are driven by public and private investment into those economic activities that are less carbon intensive, less polluting in nature. Okay, most importantly, you have to realize this an extreme statement that you must be aware of. Say, out of the nine or ten color coding that we are going to do, okay, you will find that only few of them are say, uh, in sync or in consonance with the sustainable developmental goals. Not all. Okay. So, for example, you must have realized that, say, the brown economy that we just mentioned, that is not conducive to the implementation of sustainable developmental goals. Right. Because you are looking at the uh, environmental protection, the socially inclusive, all of that is completely thrown out of the bus when it comes to a brown economy. But in terms of a green economy, all 17 sustainable developmental goals fall in sync, are in consonance with the very definition of a green economy. Okay, so it, you can say that well, it pushes the agenda of Agenda 2030 in a positive manner, right? This affects Agenda 2030 in a positive manner, right? Let's go ahead and understand blue economy then. Okay, preserving the finite resources of our oceans and waterways, right? So we have been going ahead and using this term freely in India's context. So, what are you looking at? India will look to manage marine resources through the adoption of sustainable harvests. Okay. Regeneration where necessary. It strives to eradicate the pollution and recycle waste in the marine environment. So, essentially, you are looking at harnessing the oceans in a positive and sustainable manner. Now, for example, you might realize by now that say deep sea dredging, for example. Huh? Deep sea dredging. Can you consider this to be an activity that would be seen in a blue economy? Possibly not, because you are looking at it being an un environmentally unsustainable practice. Okay? So, if India includes, and if you look at say investments in offshore renewable energy, that's a part of blue economy. Why? Because eventually you are using the ocean's resources. Huh? The wind or the tides from the ocean are being used in a sustainable manner to provide for the people. 
right? So that becomes the very definition of a blue economy, right? Wealth in the context of this economy is more, more than about financial riches. It is about the health of a marine ecosystem, right? Sustainability being the buzzword here. Let's look at golden. Okay. Golden is also known as sunshine economy, by the way. Like the name, the color gives it away. It is to do with the energy issue. You are looking at replacing fossil fuels with renewable sources of energy. Then that becomes a golden economy. Right? So, for example, each country has, uh, say, now got its NDC, nationally determined contributions. You have major economies that have gone ahead and said, well, we'll become net zero uh, by, say, 2030, 2050, 2070, depending on the country. What are they trying to do? Eventually, this, uh, say, transition happening from a brown economy or a consumer of fossil fuels to becoming a consumer and a producer of renewable energy. That is the focus of a golden economy. Okay? Along with green and blue economies, the golden economy effectively addresses the social and environmental challenges. So once again, it affects my agenda 2030 in a positive manner. Okay? We should go ahead and draw this correlation for each of them, by the way, my friends. Next, purple economy. What does purple economy do? It's a multidisciplinary approach that encompasses a diverse array of key social issues that improve everyone's quality of life. Here it is. So, which means you're looking at building human capital. Exactly. You're looking to invest in people. You're looking at, again, once again, sustainable development. Look at this. Huh? It champions the interests of the vulnerable groups like children, elderly, people with disabilities. Which means, once again, it goes ahead and affects in a positive manner, my agenda 2030, right? So rights-based issues become the center of the conversation in a purple economy. Next, we look at the white economy now. The white economy, as the names once again suggest, it does with the health industry. Now, does it just do with the, say, service providers? Only the service providers? Or say, those who go ahead, say, the patients also? It includes both, okay? Anyone and everyone who has ever been associated with the health industry, either as a service provider or as a patient, a consumer, okay, they are categorized under the white economy. Are you getting it, guys? Batman and Vizag, good morning. Thanks. Thank you, Batman. You are very, very kind to say that. Thank you. Village creator, good morning. Good morning. Namaskar. Right, so look at this. Sick people are also included in this group. This is a broad and inclusive category. Once again, it affects my agenda 2030 in a positive manner. Okay, that's white economy. Now let's look at silver. So silver is to do with the economic activities of the 50 plus age group. Simply put. Okay, the sum of the economic activities of people over the age of 50 gets categorized in the silver economy. Right? So whether they are producers or consumers. Huh? You have one uncle who is now selling his hair oil quite prominently on a major e-commerce platform. I think he's an octogenarian. So his production, his contribution to the economy is getting categorized under silver economy. Okay. This is connected with the services, the well-being, health monitoring, health sports, health tourism, green care, all of that is a part of my silver economy. Now let's look at red. Red economy, you can straight away understand Fordism. Henry Ford, huh, by the way, Henry Ford, a very prominent name from the United States. Huh? Now, it, go, it takes its name from him. So, his mantra was, huh, ki, go ahead, huh? as far as possible, go ahead and exploit the resources. Huh? So, make use of today was what uh, essentially can break down Fordism too. So, red economy draws from there. It is about mass production, mass consumption, this consumer culture. Okay. And once again, you find is this is an unsustainable strategy. This is unsustainable. Right. But it is something that can be managed. Right. So a red economy can transition to becoming a, say, a green economy. Okay. This is something that can be managed. However, in its current form, it is negative to Agenda 2030. Right. Look at it. It is hostile to both social and environmental concerns, making it an unsustainable economic system. Right? So some people said, well, does red economy benefit my agenda 
सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंटल गोल नंबर वन ओके डज इट वेर इट सेज से यू आर इंप्रूविंग द क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ ऑफ द वर्कर्स सो बट देन एज स्टूडेंट्स वन थिंग दैट यू मस्ट इमीडिएटली ग्रास्प इज दैट रेड इकोनॉमी इज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द वायोलेशन ऑफ एस डी जी वन दैट बिकॉज यू हैव अ सिस्टम विच रिलाइज ऑन से ओवर एक्सप्लॉयटेशन ऑफ इट्स वर्कर बेस एंड ओनली देन यू गो हेड एंड फ्यूएल अ कल्चर ऑफ मास प्रोडक्शन एंड मास कंजम्पन राइट सो इट इज अ कॉज इफेक्ट सीनारियो दैट यू हैव टू को रिलेट इन विच एस डी जी वन इज बींग फ्रेग्रेंटली वायोलेटेड बाय अ रेड इकोनॉमी राइट सो वंस अगेन नेगेटिव टू एजेंडा ट्वेंटी थर्टी राइट ग्रे इकोनॉमी नाउ ग्रे ग्रे जोन हाज थिंग्स आर नॉट व्हाइट और ब्लैक दे आर इन द ग्रे विच मीन्स यू आर लुकिंग एट दोज इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज दैट मे बी लीगल बट विच इवेड टैक्सेस सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल द लोकल रोड साइड शॉप्स द ठेलाज दैट यू माइट बी सींग right they may not be say in the part of the commercial tax bracket but they are legal activities nonetheless which means that there is scope and potential for you to go ahead and include them in the organized sector right it is a problem that can be managed thus grey economy is all those ha huh, who are say street vendors unregistered factory workers or even you have these offshore transactions that may be legal but eventually you find that well a particular company or an organization or an institution is looking to evade taxes so taking through that route right so this is a problem that can be managed can be addressed but in this current form you find that well it is still negative to the application of agenda 2030 because say they are not part of the organized sector so they do not have rights got it friends which means they are prone to more exploitation got it Let's look at black economy now. Black economy is to do with all of those illegal or unauthorized economic activities, right? Which are illegal. So they are happening. So to say, my grey was my legal, and say unauthorized. Here it is illegal and unauthorized. Okay. So it can apply to any product that is prohibited by law. So you have narcotics. You have say uh, transborder uh, sale of say animal hides, bones, skins, all of that. That comes under the definition of a black economy. right answer this question my friends answer this question for me white economy silver economy gray economy red economy identify the options that may be detrimental to the realization of agenda 2030 okay answer this question and more importantly my friends always look to go ahead and use the color coding that we just learnt about use them in your answer writing this shows that you have specific knowledge about a particular topic that your answer is going to be different and much more rich in nature than any other say uh, any other answer okay so this is something that you should make a note of especially from the answer writing perspective okay if you have any doubts related to what we discussed here today you reach out to me on my instagram channel i'll be more than happy to go ahead and discuss it with you and address your doubt for you okay rest assured okay let's look at the questions of the last class how many of the above are part of the jurisdiction of the high court punish for its contempt absolutely yes you cannot get away by going ahead something contemptuous about the high court okay tender advice to the president only the supreme court can do that so no tender advice to the governor no issue certain writs absolutely so you find that 1 and 4 are the correct answers here which means two only right lakshadweep under kerala high court correct andaman and nicobar under calcutta high court correct Dadra Nagar Haveli and the Bombay High Court correct and Yanam under Madras or Chennai High Court is absolutely correct all four are correctly matched here okay the correct features of voice over new radio so in the last class we discussed the difference between voice over new radio versus voice over long term evolution okay and one thing we realized is in terms of latency which is the time taken for an information packet to go from point a to server to back to point a okay so for example you must be playing these online games uh, and then so you get in the during the game you must realize oh my ping got high and then say you probably uh, lost the game what does that tell you that your latency was high which means the time taken from your phone to the central server and back to your phone it was high so this problem is being addressed through vonr wherein you will have reduced latency okay 
your call drops will be lesser absolutely no more hello hello and then suddenly you find the call has gone lesser codex codex is the quality of sound okay so any increase in technology means you will have better codex you will have better finer sound for you to go ahead and hear okay so this is again incorrect faster connection absolutely so 2 and 4 being the correct answers okay make sure that you grasp the concept of latency because this is eventually central to the idea of voice over new radio Kaushik, abhi dekhte hai. Just uh, if you have sent me on my email, no Kaushik, just reply hi there so that it comes up high in my email. I will quickly address it for you after the class. Done. Okay, identify the correct features of Rubik's Cube. Huh? So we discussed the Arogya Maitri Aid Cube, huh? which is the portable hospital. And what you realize is in terms of your disaster management, this is a very critical example that you can put in terms of the disaster preparedness that the countries do so as to reduce risk, right? When you learn about say the disaster cycle, huh? the preparation phase, one of the key examples how the government of India is going ahead and preparing for say a disaster of any kind is to have your first responders that can be mobile and thus Arogya Maitri 8 cube is of key importance to you to understand, right? And that has been built, you realize on the design of a Rubik's Cube. What is a Rubik's Cube? You must have all tried at it. Several of you may not have been able to finish it. But well, it is something that rotates on a central axis. Absolutely correct. Okay. It has nine colored cube faces, three rows of three each. And hung Hungarian inventor Arno Rubik is credited with the Rubik's Cube. Okay. So all options being correct here. D. Okay. Let's look at this. Niraja, Pooja, Studying Raccoon, Shubham, Anurag, Trupti, Mandeep, Sonu, Eldho, Akhil, Manoj, uh, Abhiska, Abhiskarwar, Koder, Crystal, Ayush, Gatso. Thank you for your message, by the way. I really appreciate it. Guys, thank you for your participation. Okay. Go ahead and answer the questions of today and make sure that you include the color coding in your notes. Okay. Use those terms freely. Firstly, be aware of the different codes because you never know. It could be a very potent, it's, it's a ripe question for an MCQ in the prelims. Okay. Go ahead, do that and I'll see you tomorrow morning. If you have any particular questions, you know where to reach me and you will go ahead and access the PDF of this entire lecture from my Telegram channel that I'll be uploading around noon. Right. Thanks for your time, guys. Have a productive day ahead and I hope to see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. with another set of topics in the Indian Express Explain class. This is Bhuvan signing off for Study IQ. Thanks for watching. Bye.